Hey guys, Jason, and today we're going to be talking about super blocks. And when people hear the word super blocks, they instantly assume the coin is a scam coin. And I've been talking to a lot of people about this on the forums, I've been talking to a lot of people in email replies, and I kind of want to talk about how not all super blocks are scam coins. But first, let's talk about what super blocks are scam coins. So some coins come out, and they do this pre-announcement. And we talked about this before in previous videos, where I'm one of those people that, to be an ethical, you know, developer of a coin, you should pre-announce your coin within, you know, with at least a minimum of a month warning. But a lot of times these coins, with these super blocks um, set up at the beginning, they'll announce it a few days before, they'll try to be hush-hush about the coin, and, you know, we talked about before how you have this, this scale. Right? When a coin first comes out, nobody wants to mine it because they don't know too much about it. Unless it's a very anticipated, very much publicized coin that's been talked about for months before the Genesis block is initiated. But what happens, we talked about difficulty in another video as well, is when you have very few miners with very few hash rate, your difficulty is very low. But if you have a lot of miners with a lot of hash rate, your difficulty is very high. And we discussed how difficulty is, how hard it is to mine a block. So what they'll do is at the beginning of these coins, say for the first 100 coins, and say that this hypothetical coin gives you a block coinage of 500 coins. Well, for the first 100 coins, they'll give um, a block coinage of, say, 5,000 coins. Now, you can, you can, you can kind of see, well, it's going to advantage those who mine it first and who are er the early developers mining it. And I can see how most people would compare that to a pre-mine, because it basically essentially is a pre-mine right after the fact. And if you don't really announce it very publicly, it basically is kind of a pre-mine without actually being a pre-mine. So, I know a lot of people like me disagree with pre-mines. I don't, the argument is, well, we can provide bounties, we can provide, you know, so that exchanges put our coin on it. And I've talked about this before in my podcast and in other videos, you know, if your coin is a unique, interesting coin that has a large market cap, or a decent market cap, and a lot of people recognize that coin, they're going to demand that exchanges start, you know, putting it on their exchange so you can trade that coin. And, you know, people are going to start using that coin, services are going to start adding that coin because it has unique value or it has some kind of interesting service attached to it. I think giving bounties out gives out a negative press because you, you give a bounty, right? You say, I'm going to give you 10,000 JSON coins to put JSON coin on your exchange. Well, that coin got on that exchange then because... I mean, I mean, it got on there because it has no intrinsic value. It literally got on there because somebody is willing to give that owner of that exchange a 10,000 coins, which someday might be worth, you know, if it's a dollar a coin, $10,000 or some various amount of money. And so you're kind of bribing people to um, accept your coin, which I think is wrong. And so that's what the developers or the early miners say, well, the reason we need super blocks at the beginning of a coin or the beginning of a coin's life is so that we can create bounties and, you know, spread our coin, you know, give giveaways around and stuff. And I disagree. I mean, I'm part of the Foreign Coin Foundation, and one of the things we do is we didn't pre-mine. We don't do any super blocks. What we did is we collect donations from all the users that are active in the community, and then we give donations out. Uh, we don't do bounties because we give bounties for certain things like web, you know, web wallets, but we don't give them for exchanges and stuff like that. And that's the moral thing to do. That's the right thing to do. It allows people to look at the coin, analyze it on their own, and then make their own choices versus kind of throwing it in their face. Now, with that out of the way, there are some advantages to having a super block that I think are kind of interesting. For instance, there's a coin out there called Lucky Coin, and it's an interesting coin. I don't know my, I don't know if I would invest in it, but I think it's an interesting coin nonetheless. So. Now, I don't know the statistics and the, the data of this coin, but I, I've read up a lot about it. It's just, it's late tonight. So this coin will, ha let's say hypothetically, the b normal block coinage is 500. Well, you might get lucky and get a block coinage of 5,500, or you might get lucky and get a block coinage of 1,500, and it's random. And one of the advantages that I see that this coin, this lucky coin has that I don't think was their intention, but it was a side effect, Nowadays in the script coin mining realm, a lot of people mine for most profitable, most profitable coin at the moment. Well, the only problem about this is, you know, you notice how coins um, hash rate, or therefore difficulty, will go randomly up and down, right? Even with the gravity well equations and formulas um, plugged into every coin, or, and, or the coin for every blo new block, which is a whole other video. If you want to learn about that, it's very interesting. It's called a gravity well. But what happens is, 
these coins go up and down. Well, the incentive is, well, if there is a random block out there, you know, normally you're getting, say, 500 coins. You're getting 500 JSON coins per block. But suddenly, you could, you could be the lucky winner and get a random, you know, random block that's 5,500 coinage. Well, man, that's going to incentivize you to want to keep mining that coin, even if it's less profitable than other coins, because you're saying, well, man, one block of 5,500 is the equivalent of, you know, what is it, uh, 10, 11? You know, 11 blocks, and so it kind of gives an, a random but um, interesting incentive to the user to want to um, constantly mine just that coin. So it kind of keeps a um, user base of users mining that coin. Again, I think that's kind of interesting. There are also some interesting ways um, using that same concept put into other coins. For instance, um, there's a one coin, I, I didn't write the name down, but it's normal coin, um, normal block coinage is 512. But three times a day, every tw uh, so about once every eight hours, they'll give a random block. It, it's an algorithm. It's not, you know, like you can't go out and find this block. It's going to be just randomly generated of a block of 1,024. So it's like getting two blocks in one, which I think is kind of interesting. Again, playing on that concept of, you know, let's try to keep the user base mining just our coin and give them a little incentive, which I have no problem with. I think it's a great way to keep, you know, a steady hash rate on your coin and kind of create an interesting and, um, community around your coin. Anyway guys, I just kind of want to talk about super, super blocks because I heard a lot of people on the forums and I got some emails um, telling me, you know, oh my gosh, this coin's a scam because it has a super, super block. In reality, you can have a super block in your coin and not be a scam coin. It's the coins that have the super blocks at the beginning, um, early ages of the coin that seem to be the coins that hate, seem to be scams, or the coins that just have random, you know, Randomish. I don't know how to describe it. Random um, blocks that just happen to be super blocks. Well, I don't really have a problem with that. I think it's an interesting way to keep users mining that coin. Hey, thanks guys for watching. Have a great night.